Welcome to Tasmania. Woo! Good morning, campers. It's day four of this hike that we're, we're now in. We're camped at a designated camping ground this time. There's our tent just over there. Um, the Tasmanian government have put in all these wooden platforms for people to camp on. If you're here during peak season, this area is quite crowded, but we've had our, the whole place to ourselves the last few nights. Just swing around here because I wanted to take this opportunity to show you this new piece of equipment that we've been trialling. This is the Garmin Epix full topography map watch. Look at that, you can see an intermittent stream there and the topography lines. I'll just zoom back on the map so you can see. So the Garmin Epix is an extremely high tech device. Unfortunately, Garmin have stopped making them because they're quite difficult to use. I'm not trying to sell this product. In fact, you, won't, you probably won't be able to buy one because they're no longer on the market. Just wanted to show off this piece of gear. As you can see, there's the whole country of Australia. The only full color map touchscreen watch in the world, man, GPS. And another device we have been trialing for the last year is this new satellite uh, communicator. I'd like to say I definitely recommend these to lure me in reach explorers. And if you can find yourself a Garmin Epix, get it, man, because they are really useful. I think the reason that Garmin stopped making the Garmin Epix is um, the world of smartwatches is highly competitive and being such a small little screen on that Garmin Epix, a lot of people find it very difficult to operate um, to operate the GPS screen, being less than an inch by an inch in screen size. So just once you get the hang of it, the Garmin Epix. For me, I find it to be insanely useful for navigating in the, in the parts of the world where we use it for. Let's just come back. Apologies for the lack of clarity here. There's Tasmania. So one problem we've had at this campsite is the possums. It's a native animal. A lot of tourists, they feed the native animals. Uh, so the possums hang around and they try and steal your food during the night. They'll try and climb over your equipment. They'll try and chew their way into your tent if you give them a chance. There's our tent there. So I've got this clothesline strung up. Possum proof wardrobe, you could call it. With a very tight string line of probably only two millimeters in the possums. Uh, with my gear hanging up this way, they can't actually touch any of it. Possums are very proficient at climbing trees, but they're not capable of tight tight walk, uh, walking across that string line. It's a big fat possum known as the brushy tailed possum. So all I do is just make sure the gear is about half a meter or so in from the nearest climbing point. Here's a upright log that we're using to stabilize the uh, wardrobe clothesline. So theoretically the possum could climb up that log, but as long as all your gear is about half a meter or so in they can't reach out. Here's my new sleeping bag by Mont. One of the lightest sleeping bags in the world. I'd highly recommend this Australian brand name. Only 400 grams, extremely light. Top quality down as well. I think it's 700 loft. <clears throat> so here's the other climb point. So I have physically watched myself with my own eyes, the possums, I'll climb up here and I'll hang around this part of the tree and you can see their little heads moving around, they're trying to work out how to climb across the string line, but there's no way. Um, obviously the possum could jump onto my sleeping bag, they don't really do that though, they don't jump onto stuff that they know they can't climb on. And of course while I'm sleeping at night, the sleeping bag is inside the tent. There's our water supply. One last thing I wanted to show you over here. I'm going to have to take you down to the creek to show you this new piece of gear that we're also trialling, which I'm slightly sceptical of. Which I'm slightly sceptical of. And this is the MSR Guardian. 
that's for cr creating uh, purified water so I've got the pre-filter here underneath this log and later on to, after I finish making this video I'll be pumping uh, making some clean drinking water with that device so I've, I've always been a very big fan of MSR but to be honest I'm a little bit skeptical still about this because there is actually a leak uh, between the base and the main housing of the filter so this particular uh, MSR Guardian filter I'll be sending back to MSR and I'm expecting that they will replace it with a brand new one because uh, maybe I've just been unlucky I do have a lot of faith in this invention that, that's the MSR Guardian but I wouldn't want to give you false information <coughs> stay tuned later in the year we will let you know if we are satisfied that the MSR Guardian is a um, worthy item hopefully it's just us we've just been unlucky with that particular filter thanks for watching bush channel happy camping